All right, I'm gonna show you how to create a data-driven database, I think, in two parts. First part, I'm gonna show you how to create the database tables, and the second part, I'll show you how to use them in your program. So I first start by creating a project, and I'm gonna create a project where I just keep track of plants in my yard. So I'll call this a plant uh, data. Like next. And then I go ahead and I create it. Now that I have my plant data uh, project created, I'm going to go ahead and add some important libraries. So I go up to my tools and I find the NuGet package manager and I do the manage NuGet packages for solution. And then I want to browse and I want to install the Microsoft Entity Framework Core. So Microsoft, um, Microsoft Entity Framework Core SQL Server. So I click that one and I select this project, which gets all of them. And I scroll down and I install this. And next, I want to do the same thing except for with the tools. So I change this to tools. And I select this. I once again make sure they're selected and I install it. Click OK and accept. Now that this is done, the libraries are installed and I can start using them. Yeah, let's go ahead and say that. All right, so I want to go over in this model section and I want to add a class for a tree or a plant or something. So maybe I'll just call it a plant. Um, and I will add a class. I'll call this my plant class. And this could be a flower, it could be a tree, it could be some other plant grass maybe so in order to keep track of it in the database I need to have some kind of a a uh, primary key so I'll call this my plant ID so public and and this will be plant ID if it has ID in the name right there at the end, then what happens is later on, you'll be treated as if it is a primary key and built that way. So we have a getter and a setter. Um, I also make sure the int is nullable in order to, um, well, it doesn't actually have to be nullable later, but I'll just do that. Um, I'll just make it an int, right end. And then I do a public, um, string name of the plant. And I have a getter and a setter. And then I do a public string, maybe type. And a getter and a setter. And maybe I'll even have a count public and I'll do is a noble count getter and a setter. <clears throat> now, if I want to have certain attributes about these variables um, fixed in there, I can use the data annotations. So I do required, and then this required. Once I install the add the uh, use the data annotations, um, will make it so that when this is built, it will make sure that name is not a nullable type. So it's fixed and it has to be there in the database. The type, well, we can assume that could be nullable. We'll leave it there, and then count will do that also. So now I have my plant class created Go ahead and save that the next thing I want to do is set it up so that I have a way to well 
talk to the database. So I'm going to do an entity. Um, I'll use a context. So I'll do a add a new class. And this is my plant context. Which I use to then talk to the database. So I'm going to inherit from the DB context. Now, this requires that I have the um, entity framework core. So I'll show potential fixes and I will add the Microsoft using Microsoft entity framework core right there. Next, I need to add a couple of class or a couple of uh, methods in here. So I do public, and this will be a plant context. And I'm going to pass in the DB context options for the plant context. And options and then I put a base options and open close curly brace next I do a public DB set for communication with the database table so this will be a plant type there and we call this plants and i want to get her and set her here at this point i'm pretty good i can go ahead and set my initial data if i want <clears throat> so i'm going to go ahead and create some initial data so we can see it later so i'll have a protected over ride void and then I'll use the on model the on model creating and then type in model builder and we'll just call this model builder as well let's scroll down a bit and then this model builder I'm going to Use the entity plant, and I can use the has data to set my data. So for each plant I want to initially put in here, I have to set all of the column data for those plants. So I'll do a new plant and let's we'll start with the plant ID. I have to have a plant ID for this plant because this is initial data before I'm using it later. However, because it has plant ID or the ID in the name, later on it will be automatically generated. So I want this one to be, let's call this a rose. Um, let's make the type uh, equal to flower and we'll say we have a count of three so three rose bushes and I put a comma and then I can go do another one right here new plant this be a different plant ID plus two name equals and let's call this a um, oak tree type we'll say this is a, a tree type and count equals let's say we have two oak trees and then i don't put a comment here because i'm done so now i have my data population set up so it should automatically, pop, automatically populate data when I create the tables. So I'll go ahead and save that. The next thing I'm gonna do is tell it how I'm gonna to talk to the database. 
So go down to app setting. And right here at the end, I can add a comma. And in open quotes, I can do connection strings. And then I can create my connection string inside of this. So this one is my plant context. Put a comma there. And I have to tell it how I'm going to talk to the database. So this is a um, local database I'm going to use. So server equals local db and for slashes here, mssql local db. Put a semicolon there. My database I'm going to use is going to be called plants and I need a trusted trust connection equals true and then multiple um, active result sets equals true okay so now i have this in my json file for later use um, you can be updated and changed if i move my application somewhere else the last thing i need to do as far as configuration setup is to go to the startup.cs and i need to add a new service in here so i got this configure services and i'm going to add a new service so I'll do services and then I'll add the DB context. Now, a lot of the stuff I'm typing, it doesn't know about yet. So I will put it in here and then we'll go ahead and add some stuff in there. So this is my plant. Oops. Plant context. And. options options use sql server it doesn't know about the sql server so we'll need to tell it that too configuration get connection string and I'll pass it the plant context. And then I have that. It doesn't know about my context because it doesn't have the mod models. So I'm going to add, add the models right here. And it doesn't know about the SQL Server because it doesn't have a framework. So I'll go down here and add the framework using Microsoft Entity Framework Core. At this point, it looks like we are pretty good. We're just missing a closing parenthesis there. Okay. I'll go ahead and save that. The next thing we want to do is actually create the database. So I'm going to close this thing out of here. So for creating the database, I go once again up to my tools and go to the NuGet package manager. And this time, instead of the solution thing, I go to this package manager console. And then I can type commands down here in the bottom. So down here, I'm going to create my initial migration file. So do add dash migration initial. And it'll create and a migration folder over here on the Solution Explorer. And it will create files in there that I can use to create my tables. Next, I will go ahead and run the command update database. And that will actually build the database and put it on my system and then I can use it. So just to verify the database is there, we want to use the view 
and scroll down to this uh, SQL Server Object Explorer. Open that up. And then I'm going to look at my local database. And go Databases and Expand Plants and then Tables. And then you can see there is a Plants table. I can expand that if I want and look at the individual columns and make sure the columns that I think are supposed to be there are there. So you can see that the plant ID is there, the name is there, um, the type is there, and the count is there. Note that the name is not null, and then the type is nullable. And the reason for that is because I put the required data annotation in for the name. And then the key is automatically generated because it has ID in the name. I can shrink all that stuff right here. So I can right click this plant plants table and view data and then I can see all the data that I put in there manually when I initially populated the database table so this should show you how to create the database tables in the next video I'm going to be talking about how to actually use the data and have your program then use those tables